Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll run here with Sims. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Charles Sims. Touchdown number 22 on the season. And the Bucs are able to strike for six. And there the counter play proves successful for the touchdown. What typically makes a counter play in general successful, Charles? But what you're trying to do, Brandon, is to get the team moving in one direction, meaning the defense, get them going in one direction and then wall them off with your blocking and bring it back in the other direction. That way, you don't actually have to punish them with your blocking. You just position them. And if you have any kind of a good back, he'll take full advantage of it and gain good yardage. Extra point up and good by Catanzaro. And it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive, 80 yards, 9 plays. And it was all finished off by the 17-yard touchdown run. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Falcons offense making their way onto the field. Let's take a look at the playoff picture coming into the weekend in the NFC. And the division title out of reach. We know that. This is as good a spot, Charles, as they're going to get. That first wild card and the number five overall seat. So it's just a matter of adjusting now, isn't it? And what I mean by that is mentally. Every team starts the season thinking, let's go for the number one seed, right? Being the top team. Number two is pretty great, too, because you get the opening bye and you're at home after that. But it doesn't matter at this point. Just getting in and you just sit down and talk to your team. Would you rather go on the road and deal with someone or would you rather stay at home for the playoffs? Let's go on the road and go take someone out. Line of scrimmage again the 25, second and 10. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. It was Jason Pierre-Paul who was able to get him down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. Are... And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And the Buccaneers have it. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. It's a quick turnaround for them after the turnover, but the way they moved it on their last drive, they're probably eager to get right back at it. And you know me and you know my tendencies in this situation. What do I want right now? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take your shot right here. Ready. Blue lady. Winston now after the fumble recovery. Bringing it in, Jansen left side. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. Winston now. 9 of 11 passing in this first half. He's got his guys at first and 10. Let's go. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short gain down to about the 33. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. 
Two minutes remain here in the first half. We'll come back to Tampa after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll send you cross state to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have all the stats and all the scores from games going on during another busy Sunday in the National Football League. Now a second down throw for Winston. And that is incomplete. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise. Because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it, it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. On third down, Winston. He's got Evans. A familiar ring to that one. Winston to Evans for the Buccaneer first. That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. But that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. And let's face it, all of them, they all want to be number one. sack of the year. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and it can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Ready. From the gun, Winston. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? It creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. The Bucks on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This will be third and a mile. You got four. You got ready. Blue ready. Here's Winston. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. On is Chandler Catanzaro now for the Buccaneer field goal. They'll put it down right at the 40, so call this a 50-yard attempt. And that one's not gonna get there. Not enough juice, an ambitious effort but it's well short, and this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Even though they might not find the number one seed next to their name come playoff time, there's not going to be very many teams, if any, entering the playoffs on the kind of run they're on. They're hot. And I love that word, hot, because every team in the league wants to go into the playoffs on that uptick. Because a lot of the time, you sort of notice to the rest of the league that, hey, we're the team you need to deal with. You're, we're the team that's going to be a real problem for you. And if they can continue this streak, they can very well be that team and gain that confidence that they're seeking as they head to the playoffs. And confidence, that's the word I would use from our meetings with them. They said we're playing our best football right now. It is showing. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Second and 10. It's Ryan again. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. On third down, Ryan. And that is 
incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet man because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here's Matt Bosher now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. A second quarter score from down in Houston. And the early going, it's the Texans out in front. Deshaun Watson leading the charge offensively. So out come the Bucs now. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they tell their offensive guys, I can get a little bit closer this time. Closer. Yeah, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They're throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Ready. Sims. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. Ready. Blue ready. Let's go. Winston now to throw on first down. It's brought in by Adam Humphreys. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. From the shotgun, it's Winston. Oh, nearly picked. And yeah, maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. This from 54 yards away. So we've come upon halftime here in week 17 as we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando. There standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thank you as always. Welcome into our final regular season edition of our Halftime Report. Playoff lives hanging in the balance as we take you around the NFL one final time. We'll begin with a good one in the NFC South. Carolina paying a visit to New Orleans. And they have just about gone to halftime with the Panthers out on top. Cam Newton's thrown a touchdown pass. From there, we head up to Wisconsin to check out the Packers at home in Lambeau. And they trail the visiting Lions in that one. Two touchdown passes for Matthew Stafford. Finally, let's get you to Baltimore to check on the Ravens at home at M&T Bank Stadium. And they've got the lead in their ball game over the visiting Cleveland Browns. John Brown, a touchdown reception. Meanwhile, in our game, just the lone touchdown accounting for all the scoring. A tight one, 7-0 is the score. And for the call of the second half, we send it back to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax.